Hi, third grade champions. I'm back, ready to read our Magic Tree House book, which I'm really enjoying. I hope you are. Um, we are at the place where they are hearing voices singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, How I Wonder What You Are. And uh, they're trying to figure out what's happening. And we're in chapter 10. The title is Hide out. What's going on? Jack whispered. Let's find out, said Annie. Jack turned off the flashlight. The sound of the singing guided them as they tiptoed through the downward sloping tunnel and into a giant cavern. Across the cavern, candles flickered in a corner. The candlelight shone on a group of small children sitting with a teenage girl. Most of the children were no more than three or four years old. They sat on a pile of blankets, facing the girl as she sang with them. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. The children's bell-like voices were beautiful, Jack thought. When the blazing sun is gone, when it nothing shines upon, then you show your little light, twinkle, twinkle, all the night. Jack and Annie waited until the children had finished their song. Then Annie called, Kathleen. All the children turned to look. Kathleen let out a cry and hurried across the cavern into Annie's arms. Then she grabbed Jack and hugged him tightly too. The enchantress wiped tears from her sea blue eyes. Her long curly hair was tangled and dirty. She looked tired and thin. I am so glad to see you. But what, what are you doing here? She said, where is Teddy? Teddy sent us instead, Jack said, because he thought we could decode your message. Plus, he had to save down airmen in Holland and Belgium, said Annie. What happened to you? Who are these little kids? By now the children were tugging on Jack's and Annie's overalls, chattering. Hello, who are you? What's your name? They wore ragged clothes and no shoes, but their small pale faces were open and trusting. Are you taking care of all these kids? Annie asked Kathleen. Yes. I have two wonderful hel helpers, Sarah and her sister Sophie, said Kathleen. She pointed to the tallest children in the group. The sisters looked to be about six and seven years old, their dark eyes shining. They smiled shyly at Jack and Annie. These are my friends, Jack and Annie, Kathleen said to the children. They have come a very long way to help us. Jack and Annie meet Solly, Eddie, Daniel, Eli, Kathleen pointed to each tiny child as she said their names, Pierre, Leo, Marcella, and Ella. Talking over her, the children asked questions all at once. Who are you? Can you stay with us? Where do you live? Children, children, Kathleen said in a calm voice. Hush, please. Go back to your blankets now with Sophie and Sarah and rest. You can play with Jack and Annie after you wake. The children did as Kathleen asked. Still chattering, though, more softly, they followed the older girls back to their blankets. Sophie and Sarah seemed very grown up as they tried to settle the younger children down. Have you all been living in this cave a long time? asked Annie. This is our hideout during the day, said Kathleen. After dark, I sneak them into the empty chateau, and we hide in the attic there. The plumbing still works, and there's fresh well water. I found a supply of candles, thank goodness. Sophie and Sarah are very capable. They watch the others at night while I look for food. I visit gardens and gather old bread from behind the bakery. Before daylight, I lead the children back here. We sing and play games and nap and talk. I don't think they realize that we are hiding. Why do you have to hide them, asked Jack. To keep them safe from the Nazis, said Kathleen. My assignment with the SOE was to find Sophie and Sarah in a Normandy orphanage and sneak them into England. Their parents had escaped prison and already made their own way to London. 
Why were their mom and dad in prison? And he asked. Their parents are brilliant scientists. They were both arrested in Paris by the Nazis because they are Jewish, said Kathleen. That's crazy, said Annie. Yes, yeah, said Jack. Yes, it is, said Kathleen. When I arrived in Normandy, I found that the orphanage had been abandoned, but there were still children there. So Sophie and Sarah were taking care of them as best they could. Because all the children were Jewish, I needed to hide them. Oh man, said Jack. He couldn't understand why the Nazis hated Jewish people so much. He'd read about it and seen movies about it, but he never understood it. There are too many for me to get them all to safety, said Kathleen. That is why I sent word to Teddy that I needed magic. I wanted something to make us invisible or something to help us fly. If only I could turn them into little birds, I thought they could fly across the channel and then become themselves again. Right, said Annie, smiling, like when you once turned us into seals off the coast of Ireland. Exactly like that, said Kathleen. Well, why do you need magic from Teddy, asked Jack. What happened to your own magic powers? I do not know. Kathleen shook her head. I, I seem to have lost part of myself here. I fear that sadness and worry have drained me of my ability to perform magic. Perhaps being terrified for the children, she shook her head again. But you have brought help, yes, the wand? Jack took a deep breath. Actually, no, we didn't, he answered. No magic, only ourselves. Kathleen looked confused. But in my message, I know, said Annie, Teddy meant to give us the wand of Dianthus, but he forgot. He was flying the plane and helping us learn how to parachute, and somehow he forgot. And we forgot, too. I remember just as we were about to jump out of the plane, said Jack, but then it was too late. He forgot? I cannot believe it. How could he? Kathleen's voice trembled. Oh, that it's terrible. Only magic can help these children escape harm. We cannot leave France now. We are trapped. You have to leave, said Jack. We all have to leave by midnight. A giant military invasion is starting tomorrow. It's called the D-Day invasion. We heard the bombs will be dropped over this whole area. Kathleen shook her head. No, I, I, I don't know how we can leave. No, it is not possible, she stammered. Jack couldn't believe how much Kathleen had changed from a joyful, confident person to someone much more worried and fragile. He found his own confidence starting to fail. I don't know what to do, he said, looking at Annie. Well, said Annie, I know what to do. We're going to get all these kids and ourselves out of France by nightfall. We have skills. What skills, said Jack? Um, skills, you know, you said so yourself. Remember in the ditch, said Annie? Jack couldn't think of a single skill that would help their situation. Don't worry, Annie said. We have courage, we have hope, and we have each other. So let's make a plan. Jack just stared at her. Annie went on. First of all, she said, with all these kids, we won't be able to fit into Teddy's little plane. She turned to Kathleen. We already sent a message to Teddy telling him to pick us up at nightfall at the same spot where he dropped us off. So now we just need to send a message telling him to bring a bigger plane. Sylvie at the bistro can do that, said Jack. Annie's confidence was lifting his spirits. Good idea, said Annie. Next, we have to figure out how to get from here back to the drop zone. That's the hard part, said Jack. We need a truck or something like the milk truck that took us to Con. Right, said Annie. So the kids can hide in the back. Kathleen's face lit up. Oh, every night I go to the bakery up the street after it closes, she said. There's always a delivery truck parked in the driveway. It is never locked. I know this because I gather scraps of stale bread from the back. Okay, said Jack, but there's only one problem. If we borrow that truck, who's going to drive it? You, silly, said Annie. Me, said Jack. Yes, you, Annie turned to Kathleen. Jack's not old enough to have a license, but he learned how to drive an old truck on our great-grandfather's farm. He's only allowed to drive around the pastures, but he's a good driver. That's one of his skills. 
No, said Jack. Yes, said Annie. So all we have to do is gather the kids, use the truck to get them to the drop zone, wait for Tay to show up with a bigger plane, get everybody on board, and we're all out of here by nightfall. Fantastic, said Kathleen. We have a plan. Wow. That's a very ambitious plan. Let's see what happens. So we will begin on Monday on page 121. Thank you so much, champions. I hope you have a really good weekend and take care of yourselves. Bye.